welcome once again to our transceiver design course uh, we are discussing the oscillator design and in last class we have stopped at the uh, cross coupled oscillator so in order to design cross coupled oscillator your gm rp should be greater than or equal to 1 now there is a three point oscillators that are also used uh, that uh, by tapping out the inductance at one of the point which has a C1 and C2 and uh, we can obtain by grounding each of the transistor terminal. So, this is a common source configuration and this is a common gate configuration. So, any of this can be used to generate the oscillation. Here if C1 uh, equal to C2 uh, transistor must provide a sufficient transconductance so that it will satisfy a GMRP which is a greater than or equal to 4. Uh, this kind of oscillator has a drawback because you require a very high Q inductor and it is only generating the single ended output. For certain uh, low power application or in uh, some of the application where uh, you have a op chip inductor there, there you can use a, this kind of configuration. But for on chip cross coupled oscillators are widely used because it is providing a differential output and you can have a oscillation uh, with uh, less Q inductor as well. So, now we are moving towards the voltage controlled oscillator because we need to tune our oscillator frequency at different range that is a requirement for a transceiver design and we have seen while discussing the basics of the communication. So, what, what is the input for this kind of voltage control oscillator? V control is the input, then there is a VCO, your output frequency is omega out. So, this output frequency, if we try to draw the graph output frequency versus V control, we are ch changing the at voltage V1 we are getting omega frequency omega 1 and as we are increasing the voltage V2 it is going to provide the uh, frequency omega 2. So, we can write omega out which is a function of K VCO this is a K VCO which is a slope of the characteristics or the gain of the VCO or we can also mention a sensitivity and which can be uh, yeah, the unit will be radian by hertz into voltage because the frequency uh, angular frequency omega has a unit of radian per hertz. Uh, so, K VCO into V control plus omega naught. So, this is how we can uh, define the uh, VCO in terms of the equation. Now, if we want to add the uh, voltage control means if we want to change the oscillation how can we change we we need to change uh, one of the parameter so we know the omega is equal to 1 by under root l and c so which parameter we can change easily we can change uh, inductor is fixed because we cannot change the inductor but we can change the capacitor and this capacitor will help us to uh, change the oscillation frequency. So, for that uh, VCO we can use the MOS vector to change the uh, pre, uh, capacitor. So, this is already uh, C1 uh, based on the C1 it is already oscillating at one frequency, but this C variable is added that does not that, that is provided by using this uh, MOS variable capacitor. So, how can we get that drain and source will be connected to the V control and uh, gate will be connected to this. So, here uh, as, as I told it is difficult to vary the inductance electronic, electron, electronically we only vary the capacitance by means of varactor. So, this C varactor, if we try to plot uh, 0 to uh, V, 
if we try to increase the voltage it will uh, the capacitance will reduce to the C mean. So, most selector are more commonly used than a PN junction uh, for a low voltage design. So, this is how we can have a, a VCO voltage control oscillator and this uh, MOS uh, capacitor has also it is not a linear capacitor that we can see it will not linearly change, but because of the C1 uh, which is uh, connected, uh, it try, it mostly try to add with the C1 and we can have a uh, oscillation which is a linear. So, we if we try to get a C where which is a uh, V at voltage V1, at voltage V2, C where 2 and at VDD by 2 this is a voltage. So, for LC VCO with a wide tuning range VCO with a uh, continuous tuning, here the common mode level is simply given by a gate source voltage of a diode connected transistor carrying a current of IDD by 2. So, VGS 1 and 2 which is equal to given by this equation. So, he here what we can see is uh, we can also put the current source at the top and uh, try to uh, we will try to make sure that equal current will be distributed on the both the branch. VCO using a capacitor coupling to a director. So, here wh what has been done? Now, this uh, there is a capacitor coupling C S 1 and C S 2 and this voltage of the uh, varactor E will be controlled means this V B will be fixed and we can try to get the uh, capacitor uh, change in the capacitor by changing this voltage of V B or a V control. So, to avoid the varactor modulation due to the noise of the bias current source that this bias current source noise, we return to the tail bias topology, but so in the previous example we have used the tail bias topology uh, to uh, reduce the noise of the bias current, but what will happen employer AC coupling between the varactor and the core so as to allow positive and negative voltage across the varactors. And what is the principal drawback of this circuit stems from the parasitics of a coupling capacitor. So, this will also add a parasitics and that will try to reduce the maximum capacitor. So, your tunability will uh, reduce. VCO you we can use a uh, using a coupling capacitor to varactors parasitic capacitance to the substrate. So, here the choice of Cs which is equal to 10 into C max. So, if we try to choose a Cs uh, this capacitor Cs which should be higher then reduces the capacitance range by 10 percent, but introduce a substantial parasitic at x and y uh, or at p and q because integrated capacitors suffer from the parasitic capacitance, capacitance to the substrate. So, we can see that uh, metal 6 uh, if there is a capacitance A and this is a capacitance B, there are a various uh, parasitic capacitance to the substrate. So, this C B by C B by C A B for uh, if your number of layers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, typically exceed the 5 percent. So, that is why uh, this uh, does not have a very wide tuning range. So, we can use a discrete tuning. The what is the drawback? It cannot have a sufficient tuning range. So, how can we improve the tuning? by adding a discrete tuning. So, in discrete tuning what we will do? Uh, we will put a more capacity one, one we will use for a fine tuning. So, this is because it has a variation less. So, this is used for a fine tuning 
and this will be used for a coarse tuning. So this uh, here you can see that for n into Cu, so n number of capacitor we can add. So the first capacitor if it is switched on and then with V control we can change the uh, oscillation frequency. Again we can change the uh, by tapping the other capacitor on. So in application where substantially wider tuning range is necessary, we can use the, this discrete tuning method. So uh, to achieve a capacitance range well beyond uh, C max by C mean that we have seen the limitation of uh, only using a varactor diode. The lowest frequency is obtained if all of the capacitor are switched in and the varactor is at its maximum value. So that omega minimum frequency is given by 1 by L1 into C1 plus C max into NCU where all will be switched on and maximum frequency we will get when there is a uh, only C1 plus C mean. So the highest frequency occurs if the unit capacitor are switched out and the varactor is at minimum value. So for uh, tuning uh, higher for tuning the coarse tuning, we will switch on the capacitor and then fine tuning will be done by a V control signal. So this is how discrete tuning can be done. But there is some disadvantage of this also. It is It has a gap of certain frequencies that we can have a variation in a fine tuning range. So if we expect delta oscillation to be greater than delta oscillation 2, this delta oscillation 1 uh, to be greater than delta oscillation 2. So uh, this NCU switch into the tanks and the varactor sees a large constant capacitance. So delta v, omega oscillation 1 equal to 1 by L1C1 into C max minus C uh, mean by 2 C1. So this is uh, delta omega oscillator 2. If we try to find out the difference delta omega oscillator 1 by delta omega oscillator 2, it will be given by this e equation. So this variation in KVSO VCO proves undesirable in the PLL circuits. So we it is not uh, linear and it it is not good to use this kind of uh, VCO in the PLL. So what is the issue of a discrete uh, tuning? It has a blind zone and that blind zone should be removed. So the oscillator fails to recover the range of omega 2 and omega 3 if we try to see this uh, for any combination of fine or co coarse control. So to avoid the blind zones, each of the two consecutive tuning characteristics must have a overlap. So if we overlap this uh, the, this tuning range with this tuning range and we can get the same frequency at th this two point. So this uh, to avoid the blind zone what we do is uh, each of the two consecutive tuning characteristics must have some overlap. This precaution translates to a smaller unit capacitor but a larger number of them enhance a complex layout. So your layout complexity will increase. So this is uh, all about all about the voltage control oscillator which we can uh, which we have discussed. Now we will try to see the oscillator uh, on the microwave perspective and some of the widely used oscillator which can be designed on the, uh, the way of uh, microwave circuits. So and uh, how the BJT based uh, oscillator can be designed. So if we try to uh, consider any small signal model of uh, transistor and if we connect one feedback network which is a admittance Y1 
admittance y2 admittance y3 so this is connected in this form at the where the uh, input conductance is of the transistor either bjt or apt is given by gi and this is gm into v1 minus v2 uh, that is this voltage is one of the voltage is a v1 and another is a v2 and your collector or drain is a denoted as a v4 and your emitter or source is denoted as a v2 so in order to have the oscillation if this uh, admit uh, if this parameter with uh, voltage v1 v2 v3 v4 equal to 0 we will get the uh, oscillation so how this is y1 plus y3 plus ei which is so what is here it is this is a y parameter so if, if we want to write the kcl or kvl we will get a y1 plus this at this voltage y1 v1 voltage that is y1 y3 and g i which is multiplied with the v1 so y1 plus y3 plus g i multiply with v1 plus there is a v2 voltage if we see at v2 it is a minus y1 so minus y1 minus g i then that is a uh, minus into v2 plus at v3 that is v1 v2 this is v2 and then v3 voltage that is this minus y3 into v3 plus there is no 0 equal to 0 so this is what we have written a uh, uh, kcl at each node which is equal to 0 now we will write a uh, another minus y1 plus minus y if we consider this node v2 then v2 by minus y1 plus gm plus gi um, y1 plus gm or this gm plus gi gi into y1 plus y2 y1 plus y2 gi g0 plus gm into v2 and uh, minus y2 minus g0 minus y2 into v3 and minus c naught so similarly we can write for all and equate equal to 0 what is our aim is to find the value of y3 y1 and y2 to have the oscillation so oscillator if we use a common emitter bjt in this case so for common emitter bjt your v2 is equal to 0 your v2 if we have a common emitter if we connect this with the ground and if we connect a v3 to v4 if we connect a v3 to v4 then output admittance is g0 which is equal to 0 you can write the we can decompose that admittance matrix in this form uh, that is v1 uh, so you will have a v3 v4 and uh, which is and v1 because v2 is equal to 0 so that is denoted by v so if we try to make it 0 you will get a y1 which is equal to j b1 y2 which is equal to j b2 if we replace here y1 is equal to j b1 y2 is equal to j b2 and y3 is equal to j b3 we will get a 
g i plus j b 1 plus b 2 minus j b 3 g m minus j b 3 minus j b 2 plus b 3 is equal to 0. In order to have the oscillation this 1 by v 1 plus 1 by b 2 plus 1 by b 3 is equal to 0 and x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 is equal to 0. And if we decompose 1 by b 3 plus 1 plus g m by g i 1 by b 2 equal to 0 and x 1 which is g m by g i into x 2. So, by this way we can get the uh, this is a condition to have the oscillation. So, we can design a colpit oscillator for which x 1 which is equal to minus omega naught c 1 we replace this uh, with the x 1 then x 2 which is minus omega uh, c 2 and x 3 which is a omega naught into L 3. So, if you write it down minus 1 by omega naught 1 by c 1 plus 1 by c 2 plus omega naught L 3 we will get omega naught frequency and uh, you, you should have a c 2 by c 1 which is equal to g m by g i. So, if both the, or if this condition is satisfied you will get a oscillation frequency this. So, this is a widely known oscillator which is a colpit oscillator by using the B j t. Another oscillator that is a Hartley oscillator which is omega naught into L 1. So, x 1 which is equal to omega naught into L 1, x 2 which is equal to omega naught into L 2 and x 3 which is a minus 1 by omega naught into C 3. So, we can make a uh, x 1, x 2 either capacitor or inductor. So, in Hartley oscillator it is a inductor. So, in on chip design we generally try to avoid this, but off chip we can use this configuration your L 1 by L 2 which is equal to g m by g i and your oscillation frequency is given by this equation. Now, we can use the same uh, method to find uh, for the common gate affinity. So, for common gate affinity in colpit configuration this uh, uh, omega naught which is equal to 1 by L 3 C 1 plus C 2 by C 1 C 2 and this is a G m by G naught. And for a Hartley oscillator uh, only the C and L is replaced this is G m by G naught. So, in practical uh, there is a resistance also involved and uh, that resistance uh, will uh, add the because of this resistance the omega naught frequency will deviate and it is given by this equation and your C 1 and relation of C 1 dash where C 1 dash is this and R by G i is given by this equation. So, the, this is how Hartley and Colpit oscillator we can design. Another approach in uh, microwave oscillator design is uh, by considering the reflection coefficient gamma. So, here if you see this is a, a resonator on the left side and uh, it is a impedance ZL and there is an active device which is the impedance of Z in and noise is added plus or minus E t it is mentioned by E t and there is a A i n which is a uh, a i n signal which is transferred from this to this side a l which is transferred from active devices to this. So, you will have the gamma in which is a uh, noise which is generated and gamma l uh, this is a a l node and this is a a in node we have already seen the signal flow graph in the signal flow graph if we want to have an oscillation uh, we need to have a negative resistance uh, oscillator and that we already know then in the uh, last lecture we have seen that negative resistance is required in order to have an oscillation. So, if we want to design an oscillator this is a model of oscillator there is a transistor 
and a terminating network which is a lossless. Uh, here this is a gamma out of the transistor. The way we have designed the amplifier while discussing the amplifier, similarly we can also design the oscillator. Here this is denoted because we are terminating the network that is denoted by the gamma t. The total is a gamma in reflection coefficient and gamma l. You need to design a uh, input matching network in this case so that it will sustain the oscillation. So, this combination of gamma in and gamma l uh, needs to have a uh, satisfy the oscillation. So, what is this negative resistance model here? This is a given by Z L uh, omega circuit negative uh, resistance and this is negative resistance added by the uh, active circuit. So, uh, from active circuit we will get a negative resistance and this is a passive re resonator which is a generating the uh, which has a reflection coefficient given by the gamma L. So, if we try to see in terms of the impedance or admittance, uh, same we can represent a gamma L and gamma in. So, your total current if we see in terms of the voltage V L T means in terms of the voltage V L T plus V in T equal to V T is equal to 0 and in this current if it is a series resonance it is a uh, we can consider it as a voltage. If it is parallel it is I L T plus I in T which is equal to I tau equal to 0. So, this is how we can use a negative resistance model to uh, have the oscillation. So, we already have seen this feedback model. So, transfer function uh, V out by V in given by A V j omega by 1 minus beta j omega A V j omega. Same thing we can write A L by A in. So, if we write A L by A in which is equal to reflection coefficient gamma in uh, omega into A divided by 1 minus gamma L omega into gamma in omega because uh, if we try to see there is only one loop uh, that is gamma in by gamma L and uh, if we want to reach from if we want to find the L by A in it is it has only one path which is a gamma in omega A. So, 1 gamma in omega A by 1 minus gamma L omega A into gamma in omega A. So, in the absence of any input signals for the oscillation to sustain itself the denominator should be 0 and that we already have seen in uh, in this case if we have a denominator is equal to 0 you will have a this is equal to 1. So, uh, this 1 minus beta j omega a v j omega uh, is equal to 1. So, this is equivalent to the expression on this gamma l into gamma in is equal to uh, 1 minus gamma L into gamma in omega it is equal to 0. So, you should have a gamma L into gamma in is equal to 1. So, this is a condition to have the uh, oscillation. So, what is the condition? The two condition mentioned above can be satisfied only you have a Z in A naught minus Z L and omega naught. The, this already have seen while discussing the one port oscillator and uh, where A and infinity are the steady state amplitude and a frequency respectively. Here uh, which, which is further uh, mentioned as a gamma L omega naught gamma in omega naught A naught is equal to 1. However, that for A less than A naught when the amplitude is less than a stable amplitude gain to provide so that r in omega a should be greater than r l omega. So, this is the uh, different way of representing the Barkhausen criteria. This is the same Barkhausen criteria, but here we are uh, trying to see the Barkhausen criteria in terms of the reflection coefficient gamma. So, hence to start up uh, when a is equal to 0 your r in omega is equal to 0 should be greater than r l into omega. So, for startup and similarly for a greater than a naught the amplitude is more than the stable amplitude. So, attenuation has to be provided. So, for that your r in omega 
comma a should be less than R L omega. So, if we try to uh, have the graphical analysis, this is uh, Z L omega which is plotted and this is a minus Z in A. So, if we try to plot the Z in means negative resistance Z in and the Z L in the same plane impedance plane. So, we can see that interestingly angle uh, we can find the angle measured clockwise from the device line arrow direction. So, if we try to find the angle between Z L and minus Z in this is a uh, this this angle is unstable because it has a uh, the phase shift which is very high and if we have a angle which is less than 180 that is this which will provide a stable operating point. So, the intersecting angle measured a clockwise from the device line arrow direction set by Z in A for increasing A to the line impedance locus arrow direction must be less than 180 degree for the stable point. In order to have a stable oscillation, this is how uh, we can have a stable oscillation. So, we will discuss more about the design of this uh, kind of oscillator uh, in the next class. Thank you.